Hello and welcome to the Wicked Things Podcast. The story you're about to listen to is called Small Town Kids. If you like stories like Stranger Things, The Goonies, or The Explorers you are gonna love this. Afterward, feel free to drop by our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube pages or even leave a little message below. If you really enjoy our content check us out on Patreon. Clancy pokes his head out of the dead body storage room. He looks up and down the hallway of a well-maintained facility. He notes the high and wide safety glass windows along the wall opposite his current room. The tile floor shines and reflects brilliantly like a mirror. He notes a reddish glowing exit sign to his right. My dad always says to follow the red exit signs because even the government has to follow some of its rules, Clancy said as he shrugs and nods towards the exit sign. Sounds good to me, Mike said, stepping fully into the hallway, motioning for the others to follow him. Zack, I'm going to need you to watch the other hallway. You'll need to warn us if any soldiers come, Mike said, pointing to the other end of the hallway. He turns away, leading the smaller kids away from the cold, dead body storage room. June's face twists in confusion and asks Clancy, What do you think this place is? It is way too big to go unnoticed by the adults. Clancy beams at the chance to talk about his father's dogma. Well, June, my dad says the government has all kinds of these places scattered all over America. He says they call them black sites. The military industrial complex uses places like this to extract special information and research of enemy or extraterrestrial technology, like Area 51. Wait a minute. Have you not heard of Area 51? June shakes her head at the surge of conspiracy theory and drug-addled wisdom Clancy regurgitated in a single breath. She said, waving her hand at him, Shut up, or they will definitely find us. Willow said through her smile, adding to June's words, Besides, you don't want them learning how much your dad knows about what's going on. If they think he knows too much... Clancy patted the side of his head. You're right. Dad says they have cameras everywhere. They will take him away and torture him to death. My dad's a genuine hero. He's trying to keep the public informed about the facts being kept from them. Mike grabs Clancy's arm and motions for everyone to hush. He whispered, Come on. They will catch us if we don't get out of here soon. Mike leads the youngsters through the corridors, following the exit signs inside the building. Mike smiles, feeling relief wash over him, seeing the actual exit ahead of the group a short way down a hallway. We're almost... Zack said, interrupting Mike but pointing in front of them. Mike, they found us. The kids watch as several identical soldiers in uniforms carrying clubs and pistols step between them and the exit. Mike and Willow nearly tumble over one another to stop before running into the soldiers. The group of juveniles stand feet from the soldiers, interrupting their exodus. Soldiers close ranks, shoulder to shoulder, blocking the exit behind them. The soldiers pull out their club and return service pistols to their holsters. One man steps forward, issuing a command to the miners. He said, Give me the dog and return to the storeroom now. A thunderous boom shocks those both inside and outside of the building as it shakes from an explosion nearby. Soldiers and kids are knocked to the ground as the shockwave races through the floor. The building rumbles in response to the explosions. Additional ceiling tiles and wires fall free from their attachments. Sparks shower those in the industrial corridor as dust lands covering everything and everyone inside in a light coat. Everyone struggles back to their feet, but Clancy rushes to look out the now-cracked window. He looks back at the soldiers and smiles, pointing out of the window. Clancy points out the window and says, You guys are in for it now. My dad's here. Inside the perimeter fence surrounding the compound beyond the window, the juveniles watch in awe as several pickup trucks filled with heavily armed local militiamen burst through the gate of the compound. The weapons of the militiamen rattle and roar. 
the compound soldiers rush to defend against the invaders. Clancy shouts in excitement, Get him, Dad! When Clancy turns back to face his friends and the soldiers, everyone has climbed back to their feet. He sees Phoebe cowering nearby. Clancy lunges for the little creature, snatching it up into his arms. He spins to point Phoebe at the soldier and yells out, Come on, if only once. They're going to kill us all. Save us, Phoebe. The head of the dog swells as a red glow melts the dog head, part of the disguise sending fragments of hot flesh raining down everywhere. A wide red beam of heat rips out from the little creature and hits the soldiers. The soldiers screams out in pain as their bodies wither, melt, and disintegrate. Willow vomits. June turns green. Mike faints. Zack screamed. Ava stares wide in shock. Clancy stares at Phoebe as the beam fades and smoldering remains sit feet away. He laughs and hugs Phoebe. The little creature pushes off Clancy's chest, asking him, I did good? Clancy nods excitedly at the question. He holds Phoebe out at arm's length and stares starry-eyed at her. Clancy dances around in a circle, swinging Phoebe at arm's length. Heck yeah! Did you know you could do that? Phoebe scratches the back of her head. Now I do. Willow and Ava work together to help Mike get back to his feet. Ava strains against the weight of Mike's body. Willow looks at Zack, then nods towards the exit. Lead the way. Zack grabs Clancy by the wrist, pulling him behind him as he leaps over the greasy, smudge-like remains of the soldiers. Clancy's footwork does not prove to be as agile as Zack. His foot slips in the oily ashes of the fallen soldiers. The other kids cannot help but pause and laugh at Clancy's misstep. He slowly makes his way back to his feet, wiping at the smear of ash and oil that covers his jeans and t-shirt. Oh man, my dad's going to be mad I ruined his shirt. The fighting outside intensifies as soldiers and militiamen run out of ammo and are forced into an unexpected melee. Knife blades glow with the light of day, illuminating the razor-sharp edges. Bayonets fixed to rifles, parry and thrust, seeking sweaty flesh to offer unforgiving bites, tears, and rips. Men scream as the weapons find their marks, leaving many dead or dying. Mike directs everyone out of the building, following several more foundation-shaking explosions. He grabs Phoebe from the floor next to Clancy and sprints down the hallway. The others follow his lead. He always pulls them out of the fire. Why would today be any different? They throw open the fire exit door, set off alarms, and flee outside into relative safety. Bullets fly and ricochet everywhere they look. Mike thinks out loud. They're fighting everywhere except the right-hand side of the base. We'll be able to avoid the soldiers if we go that way. Zack points toward the assortment of vehicles parked around a building with no walls that resemble a mechanic shop. He grins towards Mike and the others while pointing at the compound's motor pool. We should be safe near there. They wouldn't risk a stray shot hitting the fuel stored there. Let's go. The children set out at top speed to get out of the open. The group comes to a stumbling stop as their eyes grow wide with terror and their mouths hanging open. Ava points skyward and screams, What the heck is that? The sky overhead darkens, first to dusk and then midnight within seconds. All eyes turn to the sky above. The fighting stops cold as both soldiers and militiamen look up. A massive shape, twice as large as the entire base, descends from behind the clouds. It easily conceals the midday sun from everything beneath it. Militiamen break ranks first and flee from the gigantic extraterrestrial spacecraft hovering overhead. The soldiers turn every weapon at their disposal on the ship floating above. They unleash everything they have against it. A volley of rockets following a storm of gunfire hit the spaceship, but the soldiers' weapons have no effects against a ship designed 
to resist space debris hitting it during interstellar flight. The kids watch in awe as the spaceship returns fire, blue neon lights race across the surface of the craft and merge repeatedly, sending out blue beam after blue beam. Ava breaks the hold of the event, unfolding all around her and slaps Mike. Are you stupid? Get us out of here! The beam burns nothing. Instead, it hurls objects through the air through the force of its impact. Cars and trucks are sent sailing through the air several yards at a time. Meanwhile, soldiers unlucky enough to be struck are thrown hundreds of feet. June stares in awe before she said, Wow, I knew it. Spock was wrong. You can make a tractor beam push or pull. Mike Clancy, Sophie, and Phoebe cheer on the alien ship in its determination to root the soldier and drive them away. Willow, June, Zack, and Ava are horrified by the injuries the soldiers suffer at the hands of the alien ship's defensive weapon. Ava rushes out of cover, waving her arms wildly to call off the assault, seeing the soldiers either fleeing or lying broken all across the complex. Stop! You're going to kill them! They don't know what they're doing! The alien spacecraft stops, a wide blue beam from striking Ava. The beam fades, inches in front of her small body, but the wind generated causes her clothing to rip and flap behind her. As the glow of the blue beam fades, everyone can see it was not Ava that paused their attack. Rather, it was Phoebe, standing in front of her with arms stretched wide. They could hear her clearly in their heads. No, don't hurt them, they saved me! Willow runs to Ava and drags her back to the rest of the group. They remain hidden next to the motor pool. Girl, you almost got yourself killed. What were you thinking? Ava hugs Willow tight and weeps uncharacteristically into her chest. I just don't want anyone else to get hurt. Especially after what Phoebe did to those guys inside. I mean, look at all those hurt soldiers. June nods, agreeing with Ava's observation. I don't think I will ever be able to forget this. All of this is so horrible. People are hurt real bad everywhere. Zack shakes his head as he stares at the ground. What they did to us was wrong, but do they deserve to die? A series of green neon lines illuminate a rectangular piece of the spacecraft, and from the selection, a ramp lowers to the ground below. A brilliant, Golden warm light radiates from the inside of the craft, illuminating the facility and the exterior grounds. Phoebe looks back at the group of friends. She points to a large slender being emerging from the opening in the ship. Sophie reaches out to Phoebe with her arms, tears forming in the corners of her eyes. Phoebe, do you have to go now? Phoebe walks to Sophie, taking hold of her trembling hands. Phoebe's best and possibly only friend left in the universe. Sophie will be okay. I know. Phoebe taps her chest and smiles at Sophie. She said, You will be with me in here. Phoebe touches Sophie's chest as a single tear fall from the alien's eye. I will be with you there. Goodbye, friend. The larger, slender alien stops at the end of the ramp and motions for Phoebe to join them. Several small aliens, the same size as Phoebe, follow the larger one to the end of the ramp. They broadcast their thoughts to be heard by everyone. Come on, let's go home. Phoebe releases Sophie, running halfway between the children and her people. She stops and looks back longingly at Sophie and the children. She turns to face the large alien and asks through thought, can my friends come? The tall, slender alien shrugs and snakes its head at the question asked. It responds so that everyone will hear its response through thought. I am sorry, little one. They cannot. They have parents waiting for them at home, just like you do. Your parents want you home right away. We need to go before the humans send their military against us. Phoebe tears up, looking back at her friend Sophie, waving a single fur-covered paw goodbye. Bye, Sophie. Tears stream from young Sophie's eyes as she runs to her sister's embrace. 
Willow, don't make her go. She's my best friend. Willow hugs her sister. She can feel her sister's intense emotions as Sophie trembles and shakes in her embrace. Willow knows her sister genuinely loves her little lost alien. Sophie, she has to go home. If she stays, those soldiers will never stop hunting her down. They will keep trying to kill her. Sophie turns away from Phoebe, seeing the other children also holding each other and crying at the coming loss of their new friend. She pushes herself off her sister's chest and wipes away the tears dropping from Willow's quivering chin. Sophie stiffens her chin, sucking snot, and says, Don't cry, guys. Willow's right. She will be better with her family than stuck here with us. Clancy glances around, seeing the soldiers rallying together. He points to the throng of men readying their weapons for another attack. Guys, if my dad were here, I'm sure he would say, we need to get out of here. Better to lose the battle and win the war. Clancy shrugs and said, Fine, my dad didn't say that. We need to get out of here, though. Mike helps Willow and Sophie back to their feet. He motions for the others to follow and leads them in a retreat from the complex. He pauses long enough to make sure Phoebe entered the ship and joined her people. Okay, she's safe now, but we need to get the heck out of here. The children slip under the tall chain-linked fence amidst the chaos and flee the vicinity of the research complex and alien spacecraft. They stare back through the fence, briefly to watch the soldiers attack the spacecraft wave after wave, but their weapons pose no threat to the craft or those on board. The conflict in the complex's courtyard becomes disorientating, with the triggering of a loud base-wide alarm activated. The alien spacecraft rises straight up into the air, high above the research complex. It pauses its ascent while above the range of the bullets, but rockets fired at it still make an impact against the ship's hull. The extraterrestrial craft remains unharmed by the continued attack. Those on board the spacecraft grow tired of the assault and release several blue beams hitting both soldiers and vehicles alike, throwing them around like a dog with a toy. Vehicles explode, showering the courtyard with flaming debris. Soldiers dash to each other's aid and withdraw from the conflict instead of seeking shelter inside the many buildings of the complex. On top of the building the children escaped from, the red-haired woman in the lab coat emerges, carrying an odd-looking shiny device. The shiny metallic box can easily be seen from hundreds of feet away. She aims the device at the extraterrestrial spacecraft with her arms outstretched. The children notice the hairs on their arms and head rise, feeling the growing electrical charge in the air. June points to small arcs of blue electricity rolls along the fence between the children and events unfolding at the complex. She said, what the heck is she doing? Look what is happening to the fence. The red-haired woman in the lab coat allows a ghoulish smile to form on her face. Brilliant flashes and arcs of white electrical energy sizzle and crack all over the rooftop from the device. An audible sound of surging power accompanies the sudden increase in electrical arcs from the device race out from the building's roof. An odor of burning ozone steadily fills the air. The ship rockets away from the complex, but not quick enough to avoid a wide beam of white electrical energy bursting out of the device. The heat of the beam consumes the red-haired woman, leaving only ashes remaining where she once stood. The soldiers are consumed by the intense heat of the blast, the soldiers passing only marked by the charred spots on the courtyard's lawn. The beam broadsides the craft, ripping open the rear of the ship until smoke erupts and sparks fall. The craft burst from the cloud of smoke, rocketing beyond the visible horizon. Ava and Sophie scream out, fearful of what they had just witnessed. Oh my God! Willow and the children stare on, mouths agape, embracing one another. Willow grabs June by the arm, asking, You're so smart. What was that? June shakes her head. I wish I had an answer, but at least it looks like Phoebe and her people escaped. Pretty sure they waited to let us get away. I don't think they knew she had that thing. It was pretty obvious to me, 
they didn't know what it would do to them either. Zack spots an old hunting trail nearby. He studies the trail and its direction and nods. He motions for the others to follow him. This should lead us back to town, I think. Clancy ducks under a brand along the trail and said, Guess my dad was right again. They do have alien tech at black sites all over the U.S. Mike glares over his shoulder at Clancy's remark. He shook his head and asks, Why? Why would they have alien technology at these places? June catches her fallen glasses, following close behind Clancy. June replaces them and pushes them up along the bridge of her nose. She increases her pace until she reaches Willow's side. She touches Willow's shoulder to get her attention and said, You know, it makes sense when you think about it. They are reverse engineering the technology to make our world safer against an invasion. Ava and Sophie follow behind the other girls, their heads hanging low and tears still falling from the loss of Phoebe. Sophie takes Ava's hand in hers. Ava stares at Sophie with a furrowed brow and slight head tilt to one side as Sophie asks, Do you think they're okay? Ava's eyes dart around the trail, staring briefly at one thing, then another. She struggles to form a lie that will soothe Sophie's worries. She hugs Sophie, pulling her in close. Ava continues to glance up and down the surrounding trail. Ava blinks rapidly and huffs, but after casting her eyes skyward, she sees a twinkle of a distant star. Ava lowers her shoulders and offers, They should be okay. I mean, you saw after the attack, their ship flew away. I'm sure they will fix any damage done to the ship when they get back home, or maybe at some kind of base on the dark side of the moon or something. Right, Clancy? Clancy rubs at the back of his neck, shrugging, and responds half-heartedly. Um, I, uh, sure, that makes sense. Zack 